Okay, um, basically, I'm uh, going to do a Source SDK tutorial today uh, on triggers. I uh, can't really find many trigger tutorials on the internet, so I thought if I upload one, it might be pretty useful for everyone. So, uh, just to start off with, I'm, uh, I have a lot of experience with Source SDK Engine, so if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to post them on the video, uh, and I'll try and do a video for you uh, when I get some spare time. Um, I can do choreography, lighting, all of those things, so just if you've got any questions, give them a shot below and uh, I'll try and do a video if there's enough demand. Anyway, let's get started. I'll uh, go through this nice and slowly so everyone can keep up with it. I'm just going to uh, put Sources DK on the secondary screen here, on this HD screen, so you can all check it out. Um, hopefully, my camera will still be able to pick up my voice. Let me just quickly adjust that for you guys. Right. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first things first, I'm going to uh, boot this up. 2009, episode 2, Hammer Editor. There we go, lovely jubbly. Uh, this starts up on my screen over here, you can't see it anymore because uh, I'm, I'm fiddling around with it. But, first things first, basically, uh, I just made this, <laughs> this is what I made earlier, typically. Okay, now what we've got to do is. Um, get straight into the triggers. This is a little box room I made. Uh, I'll do a little tutorial for that, but it's pretty basic. So uh, if anyone wants to know how to make a box room, uh, give us a shout and I'll send you an email because I don't really need to have to do a video for it. Um, but anyway, triggers. So what you want to do is you want to get on your grid and uh, bish bash bosh, get yourself another wall, basically. Do yourself a brush for whatever you need. Now with the brushes, if you go to trigger up here, um, and then we're just going to apply that, simple as, done, okay? Now, uh, basically, I haven't really seen many tutorials on triggers, so I thought I'd do one for you guys, because um, I'm quite experienced in Source SDK Engine now. So basically, uh, let me just quickly move this over here, get my workspace organised, and uh, yeah, so we've got that there, but that's still a brush, it's still a brush until you turn it into an entity. So we click this button here, up the top, to entity, um, let's just show show you guys that button. Oh, my phone's ringing. One minute. Okay, anyway, we're back. So, uh, getting onto um, back onto this brush. So it's still a brush until uh, until basically we see this. Uh, we turn it into an entity. Sorry, and we do this by hitting this uh, two world or two entity button. We want to hit this uh, two entity button at the top here. I'll quickly get it on uh, on the old camera so you can all see it right here to entity if my camera will zoom in there we go you can see it right there that's the button we want to hit that will create what we want to see basically uh, which will be this handy little box and uh, let me just do the camera bingo right hit to entity and you'll get this little box come up on your screen object properties fun for detail now we want to change that scroll down to uh, trigger now uh, you'll see two of these there'll be uh, there'll be a trigger multiple and a trigger if I'm right I haven't been on here for quite a while just thought I'd do this for you guys uh, oh sorry there we go no it won't be a function trigger it'll be a trigger multiple or a trigger once they're, they're their own they're their own different thing they're not a function okay so basically uh, depending on what you want it to do uh, it's pretty self-explanatory really if you only want it to trigger once it will only trigger once uh, if you want if you want the player to be able to walk through that brush multiple times and then trigger it over and over again, you trigger multiple. Simple is really. So let's just say we want to trigger once. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to apply that. That's created it. Now, that's you'll see that by putting that little circle here in the middle. Now, what we need to do then is give it a name. We'll just say trigger one, for example. And that's our name. Now, there we go. That's our trigger. So what do we want to happen with this trigger? Well, if you uh, if you play Call of Duty Black Ops, well you'll be able to see. Well, I can see a lot of these basically. They they I think they use triggers nearly everywhere in that game. Triggers are easy to use and they do they can add a lot of elements to your game if you use them correctly. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically make this a little bit smaller make this into kind of like a doorway so we know exactly uh, where it is just going to choose a different texture for that maybe that one there we go this little button here the uh, concrete wall with no no patterns on it or anything that's just that just means apply current texture so uh, there you go 
you know that now as well. Oh, and by the way, if you want to be able to do what I just did here, you just hold this right here, uh, get your brush, hold shift, and then wherever you move it on your grid, you'll just recreate. So it's basically like clicking and clicking and dragging, it'll recreate. You don't have to uh, keep doing the same thing. Um, other handy 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 tips, I'll, I'll give you some more before it's over. Um, but basically, there's our trigger, there's our two There's our two walls to signify our trigger. Now, uh, what do we want to happen? I don't know, let's, uh, let's create some fire. So we get the uh, ENV, short for environment. We get uh, the fire up. Right. Now let's say we put three of these in. In fact, no, we're just going to put one in for the moment. Because you're going to work smart, not hard. And uh, we're going to name that fire underscore one. Um, right, that's that one. It doesn't have a parent. Doesn't have a parent class. Uh, start disabled, no. Um, duration and size, attack. Those are the basically the duration of the fire, how big the fire is, and the attack, how how, how much damage it's going to do. Um, uh, sorry, how long the time time it's going to take to go to uh, full full height even. So uh, what we got here is we've got start on, start full, don't drop, don't glow, delete when out, uh, visible from above, smokeless, infinite duration, all of those kind of things. So uh, we're going to give it an infinite duration only after it's triggered though. It's not going to be smokeless, and it's not going to start full, and it's not going to start on. Um, that's pretty much it. So it's going to have an infinite, infinite duration when it starts. Uh, so this is now irrelevant, the duration in this box here. Um, we're going to give it a size of 128. Okay, and then uh, per. We're going to give it an attack of, say, two seconds, so it's going to be really fast. Um, type natural, we get natural or plasma. Um, they're slightly different, but uh, you can check that out for yourself. Uh, we're going to apply that. So there's our fire one, there's our environment fire. So I'm just gonna do what I said a minute ago, shift and uh, create two, and then I'm gonna create another one, I'm gonna do four. So then I'm gonna get these two, and they'll both, because they're both called fire one, they're both got that, I'm just gonna change the uh, size down to 20. Now, that's that, fish flash wash done. So um, these have an infinite duration, but they're not, uh, they're not starting on, I don't think, no. So they need to be triggered. And this is where our trigger comes in. Fish mesh wash. There we go. So we've got our trigger, and uh, just going to. Uh, okay. By the way, if you go into flags, flags is like flags are like parameters you can set for uh, for the object straight away. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go. We don't actually need any of that because we're just going to trigger ourselves. But if you want an MP NPC to walk through here and trigger your trigger, you click NPCs. But clients has already clicked, and client is basically the player. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to outputs. We're going to add an output where it says add. It says mask, add, copy, paste, and delete. We're going to click add. Scroll down to on trigger. Click that, and then we're going to go to fire underscore one, like we did, like we just named the fire. And then we're going to go to uh, let's have a look what we got here. Start fire. Simples. And then you know what we're going to say uh, after about uh, three seconds. Oh, that's twenty-three. Three seconds. There we go. Right. So we started that after three seconds. Now, just to uh, create a bit of a, uh, well, fire doesn't start out of nowhere, so let's create a bit of a story. We're gonna go and put in a explosion as well. Uh, there we go, right. So now we got an explosion. See that? It's a nice big explosion. So I'm gonna go ahead and name that exp underscore one, done. Gonna put the magnitude up to 200, so double the amount of a normal explosion, and we are going to leave that there, I think. Uh, we're going to put no damage on it, so you noobs don't walk into it and blow yourselves up. Um, and uh, no smoke, no detail, no, that's pretty much it, we, that's all we really want. Um, by the way, just a tip for everyone, if you're going to put explosions in your level, uh, they won't do anything with physics. You can put the biggest explosion you want next to a barrel or whatever, it's not going to make it move because you need a physics explosion. But we're gonna, we'll, I'll get onto that in another tutorial maybe if you guys want me to teach how to do physics explosions. Um, okay, now I'm just gonna uh, make two of these. As, in fact, we're gonna, yeah, we'll just leave it at two. Leave it at two. Gonna minus the grid a little bit so I can move these around a bit more. Um, and yeah, basically, so we've got our explosion and um, we've got a delay of three seconds on that. So to make it a bit realistic, we're gonna put a delay, or we're gonna do exactly the same thing on trigger uh, explosion one, and then we're going to do explode. Done. Now I'm going to do two, two point 
2.3 seconds maybe, two, no in fact 2.5 seconds I'm going to go for, um, and then there's only half a second between the explosion and the fire starting. So we see our explosion, etc, and there we go. Now uh, we're going to move that back to the end of the wall. And uh, you know, you can just create whatever you want with the triggers really. Triggers are good for environments, good for starting off choreography scenes, good for pretty much doing anything. You know, if you want a door to close or you want an, an arena to start, like a battle or something, that's always good. Um, now I'm just going to put a player start in here and uh, we'll just give it a go. Info, player start, there we go. Then we'll get our nice Gordon Freeman who's green and is not orange because. Uh, Valve are horrible, horrible people and they don't let us see what Gordon Freeman look like ever. So uh, we're just going to put him there. And uh, we don't even need to put his suit or any weapons in at the moment. By the way, another tip, always put him above the ground. Because uh, if you put him too close to the ground, also with a lot of physical objects, if you put them too close to the ground, uh, the physics will boot in before the level. So you'll get stuff that falls straight through the level and it won't be on your map. And you've got no idea why. It looks like everything's fine, but it's because it's too low to the ground it'll fall straight through your brush. So... Uh, there we go, that's all good. I think that should work. All in one. We'll uh, run that map. Unfortunately, I think it's... Look at, there we go, all those levels uh, that I've done. I'll uh, show you those eventually. Um, but yeah, we'll just call this trigger, test, or whatever. And uh, this might boot up on my screen. So, uh, on my other screen, I think it will. Uh, normal, normal, normal. Just go for that. Don't want to do HDR yet. That's pretty... Uh, pretty... Um, pretty hard to go through at the moment, so sorry my phone's ringing one more time. Hey, can I put you back in a sec? Bye bye. Okay, then uh, that's just compiling. Oh, what screen is it going to start on? It's starting on the other screen. So uh, I'm just going to do this. Check this out on my screen. So there's our map. So I can just quickly flick out, edit, recompile, it's all good. So there's that. Okay, and then I'm going to load this. I loaded the episode 2, by the way, if you didn't hear me in the beginning. So uh, here's episode two, just booting up, and uh, it might boot. I think it boots straight into the map. So yep, yeah, there we go. Right now, all we're gonna have to do is uh, walk through here. Two and a half seconds. Boom, and the fire starts. There we go. Got a nice bit of smoke there, and uh, just after that fire, uh, after that explosion, the fire starts. Lovely jubbly, and then you can also see it took about two seconds to grow to full size, and the the, uh, the radius or whatever I set here we've got the one that's only like 20 of the magnitude and 128 here so it's good if you could use the same fire and uh, yeah there you go that's how that's how a trigger works basically um, if any of you want me to show you anything else uh, post a comment below and uh, I'll do a tutorial on it seriously uh, use and abuse me guys because uh, I know a lot of people don't know how to use uh, Source SDK engine that well but uh, I know pretty much everything so uh, yeah Give it, send me a send me a question or something and uh, I'll do a video for you. See you later, guys.